investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey and welcome to Wisdom R Us, where I endeavor to curate wisdom from the greatest investors of all time. And in today's video, I've gathered gems of wisdom from Charlie Munger on how to succeed in business and the best way to get what you want in life and what he revealed at the University of Redlands in California in January 2020. And if we can also adopt some of the same tricks and habits that gave Charlie Munger enormous advantages in life, then we're sure to also benefit from the same advantages and make better financial decisions and investments in our life. So if that sounds good to you, please be sure to like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel and let's listen to Charlie. Laura and I have fun in business and we, we like our business and we like the people we work with and, 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 uh, and we like the problem solving. That's a huge advantage in life. If you really love problem solving, that's, that, that, that is worth about 20 IQ points. Don't you read a book a day, something like that? Like you told well, me. maybe not. I read and I skim a lot. Yeah. I, I do the accidents of life. You give me books. I, I, I have yeah. a torrent of books. And perfect strangers give me books. Yeah. Lots of them. And, and I almost never buy a book anymore. Yeah. When I was young, I used to order them from the book review columns of the New York Times. And now that it's torrent of books comes in, I just select what I want. <laughs> and I'm amazed at how well some of these people are reading me. And what, and, has, and what has that done to your life, I think? Uh, well, it, it's, it, it was perfect for me. I don't think you can take every bookish little boy and turn him into a billionaire by patting him on the head and say, read all you want, Johnny. But if it were that easy, there'd be more billionaires. But... But it, it enormously helped me. And I think reading, once you've learned it, reading and arithmetic, it, you can take in so much, and you can take it in on your own time schedule. If somebody's talking to you, he may be telling you something you don't want to know, you already know, it's too hard, yeah. <laughs> or he's going too fast or too slow. Yeah. But when you're reading, you can just take it as, your take it as you want it. So it's just, it's just, it's just God's gift. If, you, if you're into self-education, there's nothing like reading. And, of course, people who do a lot of it have an enormous advantage. And I'm also a total nut on the subject that the best way to get what you want in life is to deserve what you want. And, of course, if you apply that to business, that means you really take care of the customers. And it's perfectly obvious that what's happened to Esri would not have happened if it weren't terribly good at taking care of the customers. And, of course, that's, again, I don't deserve any credit for doing it. I know I make more money taking care of the customers than I would if I were yeah, more short-term operated and operating. And so I, actually, I, 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 I don't want to masquerade as a better fellow than I am because since it works so well, I don't think it's... It'd be nice if I could get Mother Teresa and do something I didn't like doing. <laughs> because I'm a noble soul, but I, my life is organized so that just time after time what works for my pocketbook works for every moral teaching that I've been taught. Yeah. And aren't anybody with, in such a position is very lucky. And you people who work for a company like Esri are hugely lucky too because there are a lot of employers that are defective. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I have as a question is, you have acquired many companies, you and Warren together in your career. You've looked at probably thousands. What's the kind of philosophy that you have determining what's a good company and what's not a good company? And I, I, I'm not suggesting that you've had perfect success in all of your acquisitions, because I know you haven't. You told me that. But what is it that, what is your sort of philosophical rule base for when you're looking at organizations to invest in or acquire? Well, we have a very peculiar way of looking at things. We want to buy something that's intrinsically a very good business, meaning that an idiot could run on it and it would do all right. And then we want that business, which an idiot could run successfully, to have a wonderful person in it running it. And if we have a wonderful business with a wonderful person running it, that really turns us on, and it works very well. 
And now we, we do make exceptions, but not many. And, and it's a pretty simple philosophy. Warren sometimes says you have to choose good person or good business. And you know what he says? This is not politically correct. He says good business. He wants something that has such, in, such tremendous strength. That, that I had a friend when I practiced law, and he said, if it won't stand a little mismanagement, it's not much of a business. And we like businesses that stand a lot of mismanagement, but don't get it. <laughs> so that's our formula. And, it, and we can't make it work perfectly. But it certainly worked better than most people's. Another methods thing. have been. Another. And, 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 and we reject some wonderful businesses with some wonderful people where it's just too tough. Yeah. And I took on once, I've been so lucky in life that I took on once a job of being chairman of a nonprofit hospital because it was a losing hand. Too many competitors, too weak a position. It had a lot of terrible defects. And I said, you know, this is good for me. I, I, you know, I, I want to expose myself to the disappointments of the real world. And I want to tell you, it was 40 years of mixed agony and pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the agony never went away. Oh. It was, if the business is tough enough, it has a way of staying tough. As a, Warren says, that when a business with a reputation for being tough and a manager with an opportunity for being brilliant, get together. He says, it's the reputation of the business that remains. <laughs> and if, they, if they start tough, they stay tough. Yeah. It's really hard to change it, a whole it, yeah, business. Or a person, lots of luck if you're disappointed in one of your children. <laughs> <laughs> you started... <laughs> yeah. One time you mentioned that you have a particular way of making deals with people, your friends, uh, business deals. Could you sort of express that to this crowd, uh, you know, your sort of philosophy about, do you try to win at all costs? Or what is your... What, no, what no, 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 no. Again, what really works in life is win-win, and that requires some sensitivity to the other fellow's way of thinking and, and his needs. Too and but but win win is the only formula that that really will work on and on and on and when it really starts working when two people trust each other imagine take a operating theater at the Mayo Clinic the whole damn group trust one another there's not a lot of lawyers or you know they just know what to do and when to do it and who to call on for what help and everybody does what they're supposed to and so on so we're trying to get these win-win relations. And of course, I see it all the time. Costco has this reputation. I'm a director of Costco. And Costco has this reputation of being a fairly tough buyer. I don't regard them as that tough. They, they, there are a lot of people who are rich as small suppliers of Costco. And, but, but Costco is into win-win. Into mm -hmm. And... And it, that, that's what really works. Yeah, it's win-win with their customers, but it's also win-win with their suppliers, and it's also win-win with their employees. Absolutely. That's the, that's Everybody the, has to win-win. Yeah. And, yeah, and one of the and great tricks in good. life is to destroy your own best-loved ideas. And, and that I worked at. I actually go through my best-loved ideas occasionally, see if I can weed of, one out. You know. What are you talking about? Give me an example. Well, I'm trying to think of a, of, a, of a good example. Oh, I'll give you an example. It's a hard one. We had an executive in Berkshire who was a wonderful human being and terribly good at what he does. He was an actuary. And he was a member of our inner council, and he was with us, and we knew his wife and children, and we loved the guy, and he got a nasty cancer and was dying slowly. And we just left him there dying and failing. And the reinsurance contracts he signed during those last two or three weeks were awful. It was a mistake. And I've never done it again. 
uh, it's natural to love your friend so much. And it's hard to come down on a close friend. Yeah. And it's in your rules. How can you break? It's like getting up on the same side of the bed every morning. When you believe in something, like you obviously are expressing a couple of things to me. Uh, one is that you loved this guy and you didn't want to just shut him down, so you kept him in place and he screwed up. Is that the basic message? Yeah, I had a higher duty and it was, yeah. it, I think it's a forgivable sin. You know, I'd it rather is. have, if I'm going to have sins, I'd rather have this one than a lot of others. Right. But it was a mistake. Yes. It was a mistake. Or, or maybe not. And, and you know, that happened to Lee Kuan Yew, this guy I admire so, ran Singapore for so many decades. And his best friend had committed some moral act, an immoral act, and it had come to life, and, and he committed suicide. And the wife came to a close friend and said, you know, in Chinese culture, it's a deep shame to commit suicide. Can't we cover up the suicide? He said, no, we can't cover up the suicide. Again, he was just tougher on maintaining certain standards. I don't know if that's right or not, but I suspect he was right. After all, he built an empire. He built a whole nation, and all I've done is build one wallet. And this last lesson is one on humility, where Charlie Munger realized in order to correct his mistakes, he needed to let go of his ego and also to let go of his best loved ideas, especially when they involve people he was really close to, as he also cited an example of the first prime minister of Singapore named Lee Kuan Yew, who ruled Singapore for over 30 years. And they both experienced some tough situations where they needed to solve the problem and be able to figure out what is the best path for everybody involved. And so if we can do the same, we can compound on this wisdom so that we're better equipped to make better decisions and to not repeat mistakes that we might make. So if we can learn from our mistakes, then we'll be better humans and investors in the future. So if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please like and subscribe. And I wish you well on your journey to being the best investor you can be. Till next time.